Okay, so today we're going to start section five of the review chapter. It's gonna be the day one, and we're gonna learn how to simplify rational expressions. Now, another name for um, rational is fraction. So by definition, any number um, that's rational could be written in fraction form. So when we simplify rational expressions, you might also see the directions um, stated as um, reduce the lowest terms. Um, so a rational expression is written in lowest term when the greatest common factor of its numerator and denominator is a one. So also remember with fractions, the denominator can never be a zero, can never equal zero. And that's gonna come into play later on when we're solving rational expressions. So over here, this little disclaimer that B can't be zero and C cannot equal zero, all that's stating is I can't have a zero in the denominator. Because remember, anything times zero is zero. So if I gave you a fraction and I had, let's say my A value was two, my C value was one, but my B value was zero. So if I plug that in here and I do two times one over zero times one, notice I'm gonna get two over zero, which is undefined. So that's all that means. We can never divide anything by zero. Now, also, what this means here is, let me just talk about simplifying really easy fractions. So for example, if I gave you this fraction 12 over 16, and I ask you to simplify that. I know a lot of people, the common thing people are gonna look at, oh, they're even numbers, I'm just gonna divide them by two. But technically, the appropriate way is either to factor it and then cancel out the common factors or to divide this by its greatest common factor. So if you divide this thing by four, it's gonna go automatically to its simplified form. But if you divided it by two, you'd get six over eight and have to do it again. Does that make sense? Now, another way that, you know, what we're gonna be doing today is our fractions aren't gonna be this easy. Our fractions are gonna be polynomials. And what we're gonna to have to do is factor those polynomials. So what we could have done with this 12 and 16 is we could have factored it into prime numbers. We could have said that 12 is really two times two times three, and 16 is really two times two times two times two, and then you could simplify and cancel out the common factors, and then you get three over two times two, which is three fourths. Now, realistically, you're not gonna do that when you have to simplify a fraction that's a number, okay? But we have to do this when they're polynomials. Everybody with me so far? All right, now let's look at some fractions with some variables. Now, I did insert two blank si slides just to um, show you some examples of simplifying fractions, um, which is variables before we get into the polynomials. All right, so my first example, I'm gonna write an x over x squared. And I'm gonna ask you to simplify this. Now, you can do this two ways. You can either think, okay, I'm gonna factor that x squared and break it apart, and I know that x times x is x squared. Once it's factored, then you're gonna look for things that are the same in the top that are in the bottom. Now, when we go to cancel things out, it doesn't make it become a zero because what's any number, say four divided by four, what's the answer to that problem? One, One right? So I'm not canceling it away and making it a zero, I'm canceling it away and making it a one because anything divided by itself is one. So now the answer to this problem is going to become 1 over x. Now, if you can see that this has an assumed exponent of 1, I could take this x away, leave a 1 behind, and then take this exponent away, subtract 1 from it, and then it's just x to the first. Let me try another one with some more letters and variables. So let's say it's 3xy over... 9xy squared. So I need to simplify the 3 ninths, and I could change that to 1 third. And then again, I could match this x with this x, and these become 1s. 
And then the y's, I take away one from this one. So now there's just the one left behind, and then I take an exponent away from here. So now what's left? The numerator is one times one times one, and the denominator is three times one times y. And that's your simplified fraction. So one other thing I wanna talk about we start are grouping symbols. Okay, if you recall, everybody should realize that parentheses are grouping symbols. Good with that? And so are brackets. But how many of you realize that a fraction bar is also a grouping symbol? So if I have a fraction and I write an x plus one over an x plus three, what I'm gonna do here is this is considered grouped together because it's separated by a fraction bar. Now, when I go, so when I go to simplify this rational expression, I can't just say, oh, there's an X on the top and an X on the bottom and leave one third. This X and both of the X's are attached to that one and to that three. So this rational expression is in simplest form. I can't just cancel an X on top of an X. Now, Again, if so notice the difference between this and this is there's a plus sign here. So again, this plus sign makes these two attached. Okay, here I can simplify the x's, but I can't do this because the x is attached to the one. In order to simplify binomials like this, the bottom has to look identical. And we're going to do a couple of examples of this. Now, one other thing, again, remember, if I have x plus 5 over x plus 5, can I simplify this? Yes. Yeah. yes, because again, this is attached, and it looks identical. And this would simplify to 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. Watch this. So maybe to clarify this a little bit better, let's say my problem is this. So even... It's going to be written like this. I still can't cancel the x's because, again, this fraction bar is a grouping symbol. So the parentheses are assumed. All right? But let's put in some numbers here. Let's say my x is going to be 5. So I'm going to put a 5 and a 5, and then I'm going to do plus 1 and plus 3. Now, if I ask you to simplify this, can you cancel the fives and leave one third as the answer? No. no, right? We have to add those. So we would add five plus one and then five plus three and then simplify the fraction. So this is what I'm trying to you know, bring across that um, even though these aren't gonna have parentheses and they will not, and this is the common mistake that everybody's gonna make, is they're gonna see this and they're gonna think they can co cross those off. Just like you wouldn't cross these fives off, um, it's attached. Everybody with me now? All right. Everybody, I see this all throughout, like when we're first practicing this, everybody thinks they can just cross the x's off, but they're attached to that number. All right, let's try some um, binomials now. So for this one, can I simplify anything? Yes. What, what can I cancel out? Beautiful. It's got to look identical. Now, we're starting out slow. It's already factored for us. The ones after this, we're going to have to factor, and then we'll simplify. So again, this one I can simplify, the x plus 1s. Anything divided by itself is 1. And now I'm left with just x plus 2 over 1, which is just x plus 2. Let's try another one. Can I simplify anything here? Yes. Same thing, right? The x plus 1s. So this becomes a 1 and a 1. x times 1 is just x. And then 1 in the denominator, it just goes to x. Good so far? Mm -hmm. All right. What about the next one? Can I simplify anything here? Yes. What? I heard somebody say nothing. You can't simplify this, okay? Again, this is attached. 
In order to simplify here, that denominator would have needed an x plus 1. Again, this fraction bar means that this is grouped together. It's an assumed it's got a parenthesis around it. So nothing cancels here. This one is simplified. This was a trick question. You might get something like this. Wait, so you can't just uh, simplify it by just taking out the x's? Nope. Because again, watch. Let's put some numbers in there. Let's say it's 3 plus 1 over 3. Please pardon me, interrupt. Just to clarify, let's give x a number. Let's make x equal 3. Can I just do this and say the answer is 1? No. You would have to go back and say the answer is 4 over 3. Make sense? So again, that fraction bar is like a grouping symbol. Let's try another one. 4. All right, let's go to 4. Here's where we get to start factoring. Anybody recognize what the top is? Okay, what does it factor to? Beautiful. Now, a little hint here. When we're simplifying and doing the homework like this, chances are the denominator or the numerator, one of them that doesn't need to be simplified should be a clue as probably what one of your factors is going to be. Because again, remember, our goal here is to learn how to simplify. So chances are the top is going to simplify, and I bet you one of the factors is going to be that 8 plus 4. Does that make sense to you? You know, maybe not always, but when we're doing the homework practice, chances are that should be a clue to one of your factors. Now, can I simplify anything? The 8 plus 4, right? Those cancel, and now my final answer here is just a minus 4. Let's try 5. Oops, I see. I need to factor this thing. What can I do to the numerator? GCF. GCF. What's it going to be? 6. OK. So then 6x divided by 6 is just 1x, and then 30 divided by 6 is 5. You were jumping to the answer. All right, what about the denominator? What can I factor that into? X minus 5, x plus 1. Beautiful, the difference of two squares. Okay, and again, notice I got something similar in the top and the bottom, and that's what cancels away. It becomes 1s. So then 6 times 1 is 6, and then x minus 5 times 1 is just x minus 5. Nice, easy trinomial here. And in fact, it's actually the difference of two. It's a perfect square trinomial. Everybody recognize that? All right. So when I factor that numerator, what does it become? Okay. So we could either write it as x plus 4 squared or we could write it out as x plus 4 times x plus 4. Either way, what's my denominator going to factor into? And I'm not going to rearrange the order. X plus 4, x, x minus 4. Um, we're going to write it like this. So in the order, so we would square root them. So square root of 16 is 4. Square root of x squared is going to be x. And then I'll make 1 plus. Now, Anybody see anything here that I can simplify? Beautiful. Why can we do that? Anybody know the property that justifies that? Commutative. Commutative. Nice. Okay. Because it doesn't matter the order I add. So these do simplify um, because addition is commutative. So now I'm just left with x plus 4 over 4 minus x. <clears throat> Good so far? So our factoring keeps coming back at us. It's not going to go away all year long. All right, next one. What can I do to that numerator? GCF. What's it going to be? 4x. Okay, so then now I'm left with x minus 2, and then the denominator is 4x cubed. What can I simplify? 4x. Okay, good. I can divide the top by 4x. This becomes a 1. And then I can simplify this. And this actually just becomes an x squared. 
I take one of the x's out of there. So now my final answer is the x minus 2 over x squared. I cannot cancel an x out of that because, again, this was connected. Pretty good. So again, we're going to be factoring GCFs, difference of squares, trinomials, and we'll be looking for things that match something with the top and the bottom, and it has to look identical. Okay. What can I factor that numerator into? So 5 and 5, so 5 minus x and 5 plus x. What about the denominator, factors of 35, that when I add them give me 12? Excellent. And again, the order doesn't matter how you write it. And again, here's that commutative property coming back at us. Notice these two are the same, so this simplifies to a 1. So my final answer here is just 5 minus x over x plus 7. Next one, what can I factor out of this one? So I can factor a GCF out, right? Yeah. Of 5. So I'm left with x minus 2. And then the denominator is the x minus 2. And again, the x minus 2 simplify. And my final answer is 5. So once we learn how to simplify fractions, next we'll be adding and subtracting these rational expressions and multiplying and dividing, and then all of our answers need to be left in simplest radical form. Okay, one more example, and then I have a few um, points I want to bring to your attention. So last example, what can I factor the numerator? What can I do? GCF. GCF. So that's going to be 3x. And you're left with x plus 2. What about the denominator? Say that again? The grouping, okay. So we'll do it the long way. That's what my other classes wanted to do. So let's go ahead and do it. We could guess and test, but let's do the grouping. So this is where we're going to. This was last night's homework. Multiply the ends. So I get negative 60. Two numbers that will multiply to give me the negative 60 but who will add to give me seven? How about 12 and five? Yes, um, 12 and five, and the 12 will be positive and the five will be negative. So again, write this the first term, put in either the 12 or the five, it doesn't matter which, and then the last term. And now we'll make our red group and our green group. GCF of red is going to be 6x. And GCF of green is going to be negative 5. And now put the two GCFs that you divided by and then the one that was in common. And now that's factored. So let's fill that in the bottom. So now we can write 6x minus 5 times x plus 2. So again, we could have probably looked at this and realized that that was probably going to be one of our factors when we did that trinomial. So again, try to use the, prob the, the numbers in your problem as a clue. So now we can cancel and simplify the x plus 2's. And now final answer here is going to be, and I'll write it up here, 3x over 6x minus 5. Now, some people are going to be tempted to think, hey, wait a minute, can I simplify that 3x and 6x? No, you cannot. Because again, remember, this is attached. So we can't simplify that. We are done. 
So a few um, little points that I wanna to bring to your attention where I have this note down here. So again, remember anything divided by itself equals one even if it's an x minus one divided by x minus one, it still gives me a one. If you have different signs here, an x plus one over an x minus one, this one is simplified. I cannot cross out the x's, because again, they're attached. And then the last one, and you're gonna see this in your homework tonight. When you have something like this, where it looks like it's backwards, this will actually simplify to a negative one. And what I can do here is I can factor out or a GCF out of this denominator or this numerator of a negative one. So if I decided I'm gonna factor a negative one out of the denominator, so one minus X, if I divide this by GCF of negative one, then it flips to this, and notice it's the same thing now. This has a negative one, so does this. Let me not do it with the pencil. Negative one, negative, positive, positive. So now this becomes a one over negative one, which simplifies to negative one. So when your fraction, and these are like opposite, and these are opposites, this will simplify to a negative one. So be aware of this when you're doing the homework tonight. Quite a few of the problems have this, where you're gonna have to pull out a negative one GCF. So your homework, this lesson, is 11 through 20 all. Now, I know the file I provided for you only has odds. So in the module, right below the homework assignment, I posted a picture of all of the answers, the 11 through 20. So you can check as you're going along. So right now you have about 15 minutes. So there's not a whole lot of problems. Um, I found my earlier class was able to get a good portion of it done. And if you're getting stuck, you're gonna come over and you're gonna ask me and I'll help you out and show you what you need to do. So you can get started. Um, and then if you have questions, let me know. Then tomorrow we're gonna start reviewing for the test. I will also give you your quizzes back tomorrow and we will go over those also. And you'll have them for the weekend to study for the test.